Hey guys, welcome back to this tutorial on IDMT Relay Protection Time Current Characteristics Curve. This is part 2 from the previous tutorial, part 1. In the previous tutorial, in the previous tutorial, we had a glance of inside an IDMT relay, as you can see, right here. And we learned about two main settings. That is namely the plug settings, the plug settings and the time multiplier setting also known as tms but there are other features like the flag and the disk the disk shape which is important uh, because it determines how it turns now in this tutorial we will see how to connect an idmt relay to do measurement and plot the time current characteristics curve from the obtained result but before we do that, let's first discuss the three types of curves that are available with IDMT relays. If you like this tutorial, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to SimTech channel. That will be highly appreciated. I thank you if you have already done so. Now let's jump into the curve discussion. Now we know that IDMT relays have three different curves as shown below we have standard inverse or also called normal inverse and we have very inverse and extremely inverse characteristic curves now these curves tells you how the idmt relay respond to a fault when it is connected on a system now a standard or normal inverse characteristics now this is defined by formulas so when you have an IDMT relay, if you test it, you plot the result, it, it will tell you what type of characteristics the IDMT relay have. There is also a formula that can be used to determine an IDMT relay characteristics. For instance, with a normal inverse characteristics, where TC is equal to 3 over log M. And TC is your tripping time and M is your multiple of settings current. Now with different M and TMS value, you're going to get uh, a different sort of a curve, but with a standard or normal inverse. Now the next one is the very inverse. Now the very inverse curve is given by the formula that is TC is equal to 1.6 over log M over all square. You can see that this formula looks a bit different. Now why do we have a very inverse characteristics? So when using an IDMT relays in a protection scheme, the nearer the fault to the source of power, the slower the overall fault clearance time. Okay? So this situation can be improved where there is a large difference in fault level at various parts of the system by using relays with a very inverse characteristics. So that's the only time where you can use relays with very inverse characteristics when there is a large difference in fault level at various parts. For instance, between bus bar 1 and bus bar 2, the difference between the, the two faults is very huge. At that point, you can use your very inverse characteristics to improve the overall time for the fault clearance. Now, the next one is the extremely inverse characteristics. Now, the extremely inverse characteristics is also given with the same formula. But this time, the log M, which is M which stands for the multiple of setting current, is now raised to the cube instead of square on the very inverse. Now, this characteristic is mostly used for relays that have to discriminate with fuses. Now, the extremely inverse characteristic is suitable in a system or in a situation where you have relays must be used in a circuit that also involves fuses. So you can have a discrimination set up where fuses are also part of the protection system. Now, in this case, we need to use an IDMT relay with an extremely inverse characteristics in green here so that it can work together with the response time. So in a situation where you have a discrimination set up that have to work with fuses as well, you have to make use of an extremely inverse characteristics curve. That way the system will be in sync with the fuse response time. 
Now let's move on and see how to connect an IDMT relay and take your measurement and plot your characteristics curve. Now the following circuit is the circuit that is used to take measurement and test your IDMT relay. So we have a variable power supply, an AC source that must be connected and your IDMT relay connected at the end, at the other end. Then you have a voltmeter because you need to vary the voltage from zero up to a level where you want to see how much current will be pushed through. So your voltmeter is connected in parallel. And this is also the same voltage that need to energize the relay coil there because it needs a specific voltage in order for the current to uh, push through. Then you have your ammeter that is connected in series with your circuit. So you basically break the circuit and place an ammeter in between to read the current that is flowing like this. Okay? Now the physical circuit looks as the following one. Now we can see here is a variable power supply. That's a 120 volt AC DC source. Now we are using the AC source. Okay? So now we have the first one is a voltmeter that is connected in parallel as you can see there is a yellow now we have the, the one end of our voltmeter is connected to the neutral and the other end is connected into the live now you take another end of the live wire is running all the way at the back of the IDMT relay to terminal 9 that's this wire here and then the next uh, multimeter is connected as an ammeter as you can see the blue wire is running into the ammeter connection to the neutral now you can see the blue wire is running into the neutral same as this yellow point here of the voltmeter now the exit of the ammeter which is this part right here is now running at the back to your IDMT setting to terminal 10 so effectively you have a voltmeter in parallel and a multimeter and an ammeter uh, in series. Okay, now in order to start taking your measurement, you need to set up your relay on the plug settings here. You set up your plug settings to a suitable uh, current that you want for the coil to be energized, and then you set up your time multiplier setting to a correct value. And the next thing is to lift the flag. Up. so you set up the flag because the disc as soon as you turn the circuit on the current will push through based on your setting the disc is going to start turning depending on the amount of current that is flowing into the coil and as the current turns, it's going to reach the time where your star multiplier settings were set and the, 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 um, the flag is now going to trip your flag is gonna fall and we've seen it already on the previous tutorial if you haven't you can look the video on the description box and watch it so that you can see what we're talking about so then after you have all of that set set up you turn the power on and you start your stopwatch okay you you start your stopwatch and your stopwatch is going to start running the seconds third the disc is going to start turning and when the disc trip you stop your stopwatch and that's the time you're going to record that took the disc from the time it started turning into the time when it tripped and your flag was tripped and you're going to record your time and and you're going to record that time and the amount of current setup and those are the values you're going to use for your plot so it's basically the time that you're gonna set up using your stopwatch and the amount of current that you're going to set using your plug settings okay now the following setup was done on a laboratory and values were recorded the following values are real values that were obtained in a real life test of an IDMT relays so we have for a current of 0 0.5 amps on your plug settings we have a voltage that was applied because it's a variable power supply remember the more voltage you set the more current is going to push through but your current is going to li be limited by based on your plug settings uh, that set up the amount of nominal current 
that must be allowed to energize the coil okay so you set up that plug settings and then you set up the voltage then you're going to see the current is going to be pushing through and this is going to start turning and you set up your stop your, your stops your stop what this is going to start turning and trip in the appropriate time so for this uh, experiment on a plug setting of 0 0.5 with a apply voltage of 4.9 volt it took almost two actually more than two minutes for the disc to trip it's actually that's out of proportion because if it takes two minutes to clear the fault everything is going to start burning already so this basically means if you have these settings your this your idmt relay is going to have a very slow response it's not going to respond to the fault appropriately so you have to test various scenarios uh, increasing your your your, uh, your your plug settings and your TMS you can also be changing your TMS and then recording the various time and based on that you're going to get the value for the current and the value for the, the time that you're gonna uh, do with your stop or watch and at the end of the day you're going to be able to put in all your values as shown here in this table and the term value and the current value and generate uh, a characteristics curve of an IDMT relay. Now I'll leave this to you guys. There is the tutorial part three where I did plot this graph. I show how to plot this. It's very simple using uh, Excel, Microsoft Excel. But now I want someone to tell me in the comment section which kind of characteristics is this based on the result that we got this please leave your comment below and tell me which characteristics curve is this is this an inverse characteristics extremely inverse or a very inverse characteristics thank you guys for watching if you like this tutorial don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel that will be highly appreciated thank you cheers